we really had an opportunity to have all of our legislative leaders here, the governor, uh, lieutenant governor, the speaker, as well as uh, some of our key chairmen, uh, talk about issues that are coming up in this session, which started on Tuesday. So I think it's, it's really a way for our members to tune in virtually and, and hear what's going on. We had a very special panel that looked at kind of a little bit deeper dive into how all the stuff that happened with uh, getting the flag uh, changed here in Mississippi, where we removed the old flag, uh, had a commission pick a design for a new one, and then, of course, we saw 72 0.5% of Mississippians who voted vote for this new design to make it our state flag. And on Tuesday, House Bill 1 uh, was introduced and passed out of the House on yesterday. It passed out of the Senate and is now headed to the governor for signature, which means that we are very close to having an official state flag in Mississippi that we can all be proud of. Early in his, early in his tenure, when he focused on workers' comp reform, teacher pay raises, all of these things that are going to put the platform and foundation in place for us to see succeed. But this past session stands out because one of the things that I know is that the speaker really wants to focus on improving Mississippi's image and keeping our best and our brightest here. Through his commission on public policy, he's focused on brain drain, workforce development, and all of these things that are so important to us here at MEC. But more importantly, it was his stand in his commitment to focus on retiring our state flag that has made such a difference in a putting us in a position to really begin to improve Mississippi's image and create the type of business environment that's really going to help us grow and become more competitive. Please help me welcome Speaker Gunn. Well, thank you, Scott, and good morning, everyone. I'm sorry we can't be together in person. I know we always have a MEC day at the Capitol, and it's always a pleasure to see each of you here as we gather in this room, and uh, it's always an exciting time. I do appreciate uh, Scott's willingness to understand the, the sensitivity that we have going on in the Capitol right now with the pandemic. Appreciate your understanding of that as well. We have uh, been very sensitive to that. I, I will tell you that <clears throat> we feel like what we do up here is very important to the people of the state of Mississippi, and the work needs to go on. So we are not planning to, to suspend the session. We are planning to push forward. There are things that need to be done. The legislature is going to meet, convene January 5th, and we're going to push forward, and we're going to take care of the work that is so important to the people of the state of Mississippi. But having said that, we also recognize that we probably have to be safe and do some things out of the ordinary. And that's why we are doing this uh, by, by film. As you know, we have many, many groups who come to the Capitol this time of the year, MEC Day, the Realtors come, the Supervisors, the Municipal League, and others. And so what the Lieutenant Governor and I have talked about is, is trying to be very uh, aware of the pandemic and, and be safe, but at the same time push forward with the work that has been done. In the House of Representatives, we have suspended our PAGE program for the year. You know, we normally bring in uh, high schoolers and, and teenagers who come and serve as PAGES. We have suspended that for the year. We have discouraged tour groups from coming. We have discouraged these type uh, of days because we want to, as much as possible, be safe. Uh, in, in the House, we plan to encourage the wearing of masks, we plan to encourage social distancing, and I'm going to encourage my members to get in, get the work done, and, and get out. So we appreciate your flexibility and understanding this. It's maybe the first time since I've been elected that we've not been able to gather at, at MEC Day. So I, I hate that that's the case, but I'm sure that we will be able to gather together sometime in the future. Uh, I've been asked to give you sort of a, a projection of what I see happening in the House this coming year. I will tell you one of the first things we plan to do on the first day is to pass the statute affirming the new state flag. Uh, very pleased with the vote that occurred in November. I, I, I know that almost three-fourths of the people of this state voted to, in favor of the new flag. That's a, that's a strong vote and it's a strong signal as to where the people of this state want to go. And so we plan to take that up in short order on the first day and hopefully get that put into statute so that it will be there for uh, years to come. I will also like to, to commend MEC and their role in that. MEC has been an active player in helping us uh, bring forward a new state image and a new state flag. I've had numerous meetings with Scott and some of your leadership 
over, over the last uh, three or four years trying to find a way that we could uh, do this in a dignified way but also put forward an image that is positive uh, for Mississippi and I feel like we have accomplished that. So I look forward to passing that statute on the first day. Another thing that I want to talk about very briefly is the, the budget. Now I have said this in, in previous speeches and I'm going to say it again. I believe Mississippi was in the best financial shape we've ever been in prior to the pandemic. I think that's a result of good conservative decisions that we've made over the last nine years. I think it's, it's a result of the fact that we've, been, uh, we've lived within our means. We've been very conscious not to spend more money than we have. And uh, sometimes those decisions were tough. 2016 uh, you know, comes to mind where we had to make some cuts because the money that, that, that we expected to have just wasn't there. And rather than overspend, we were conservative and we stayed within our means. And because of that, Prior to the pandemic, we had filled the rainy day fund. We had funded all state agencies. We had uh, enough money to, to fix the retirement system, which was not uh, a result of any decisions the legislature had made. It just, the, the, the system had, had, had uh, gotten into a point of, of deficiency and we were able to, to fill that. Uh, and we had $200 million in the bank. So we were in the best financial shape the state's ever been in prior to the pandemic. Now, in, in April and May, uh, that, that $200 million was wiped out. But because we were in such great financial shape, we were able to weather that storm. Now, when the fiscal year started on July 1, we have seen an uptick in revenues and, and the economy looks pretty good. Now, we still have to be very careful and cautious. We received an infusion of federal dollars last year through the CARES Act and other resources that may not be here this year. So I've been very very quick to caution the, the Joint Legislative Budget Committee and my leadership in the House by saying, look, we've got to be careful with our budgeting. We cannot assume that, uh, that the revenues are going to continue to stay at, at these uh, all-time highs and that we may not have the assistance of the federal government in, in this year uh, ahead as well. So we're still going to be conservative with our budgeting. We're going to bring forward a solid budget. The Joint Legislative Budget Committee met in December and uh, we, we, we put forward a, a very conservative, reasonable budget and uh, we're going to work from that. And as you know, the budget's normally done at the end of March when we have the most information possible. So we'll see how that goes. Another thing I want to touch on very briefly is income tax. There's been a lot of talk about that. I will tell you that we've been looking at that for about four years now. Many of you may be aware or may remember about four years ago, uh, we held a number of, of um, uh, hearings in this very room, in fact, and brought in some tax experts from around the country where we talked about just basic tax policy. What's good taxes? What's bad taxes? How do we want to uh, restructure our tax program or, or tax policies here in Mississippi. So we're going to continue to look at that. There's been a lot of talk about that lately and I, I personally would like to find a way to eliminate the income tax in our state. I think that works to the benefit of our citizens. We're going to be studying a, a variety of ways to do that. So that's one thing that, that may come forward this year. And then finally I want to touch on workforce development. Scott mentioned that very briefly in his introduction. That is something that we have partnered with MEC to, to focus on in the last few years. Many of you may recall about a year and a half ago I held a summit uh, on workforce development and brain drain where we brought in national experts to talk about what do we need to do to better educate and better train our workforce in our state and to, to try to retain not only our best and brightest but to attract the best and brightest from other states to come to Mississippi. So we held two summits. One was on workforce development, one was on brain drain. Many of you participated in that. I thought they were very successful and we produced a couple of bills last year uh, that I think were 13, House Bill 1387 and House Bill 1556, both of which passed the House and the Senate. Unfortunately, they were vetoed by the governor. We are planning to come forward with those bills again here this year and would love to have MEC support once again for both pieces of legislation. So that's just kind of a brief overview, I think, of some of the things that are, that are on tap for this coming session. Again, it is always a pleasure to work in conjunction with MEC to accomplish the things that we do here at the Capitol. I look forward to hearing from many of you and hopefully we'll be able to see you soon once this pandemic uh, gets behind us. Thank you so much for letting me speak to you here today. Welcome back to MEC's Capital Day. Our next guest is Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman. Delbert is in his second year as Lieutenant Governor, but it's really 
a long history of helping the business community that sets him apart. When he was Secretary of State, he focused on things like improving the ability to have headquarters established here in Mississippi, to encourage companies to make private investment into research and development within our universities. And in his first year as Lieutenant Governor, he continued to carry on that tradition by using CARES dollars to make sure that small businesses had the opportunity to continue to have the support they needed to be successful. He worked very hard to make sure our State Workforce Investment Board was realigned to allow for the creation of an Office of Workforce Development, a longtime priority of MEC. And of course, without his help, our Business Protections Liability Bill would have never happened. So please welcome Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, and I'll, I'll leave my mask off as well. Thank you, I appreciate those kind comments. We, uh, we have enjoyed a, a very good relationship with y'all and with the business community from which I came. Uh, we basically ran a business like everybody else did before y'all hired me to be Secretary of State and now Lieutenant Governor. And to echo a little bit of what was said, we, uh, we had a very successful year last year. And that year included uh, the CARES Act money and other things that we did. And basically we gave every child in Mississippi an iPad or a Chromebook, 400,000 of them. We devoted $300 million to small businesses to get them up and can continue to run as, as they went forward. Thank goodness we, we allocated $10 million to build ICU beds and negative pressure rooms and we have 32 new ICU rooms that are now fully utilized and almost 400 negative pressure rooms that Mississippians are using today. So we, we allocated a number of different efforts across Mississippi to, to make sure that we had that money well spent, including the liability protection that we just discussed, PPE and others, helping our cities and our counties. All of that is behind us and I was so proud of the legislature this year and the work we did. It's very long, the longest in history. Now we look towards the future and that future involves you. And so I wanna to talk today about where we're going with economic development. You will see us uh, release here next week <clears throat> a new program for economic development in Mississippi. It will be called MFLEX, and I have the statute right here. This is what will be filed by Senator Harkins. It's quite a lengthy bill, and it took a lot of time and a lot of effort from our economic developers, our business communities, uh, the MEC, all, all, everyone worked really hard on this, and our goals were, first, we want to be as competitive or more competitive with every other southern state. We start with that. And the second thing is it needed to be simple and understandable so that people could, yes, actually do this at their home office or where their business was and brought into here. And the third thing that was re really important to me is that it emphasized small and medium-sized businesses. Large businesses are great. We welcome our, our, our Toyotas of the world and, and all of the Nissans and others that have been so good to us. But the, but the future in, uh, engine, economic engine for Mississippi is in small business. So you'll see the MFLEX program come in and let me give you a couple of the things that will be done. We're going to eliminate some of the tax breaks in Mississippi that are adverse to us economically and not used. We ought to clean up the house some to get started and that'll be part of the legislation. In addition to that, we will start a process where you can compute from your own home either to use the current jobs tax credit, for example, or the new MFLEX credit. The MFLEX credit will be one and a half percent on all manufacturing products that you bring in here, seven percent on non-manufactured products that are established by this business, two percent for bu buildings and repair work, a two percent credit on buildings and repair. You also get 15 percent on all of the average workforce of, for full-time employees that are brought here. Of course, we, we require that they have health insurance when they provide this. If, in fact, your average wage base is more than 110% of the county average, it, you create up another 30% of that, of your, of your employees' wages over that period of time, over the one-year period of time. And in effect, if you hire 25 employees and you're over 125%, you get 30% of, of, of that amount as a credit. Now, the reason that's so important, the last part, really is aimed at our high-tech industries, bringing high-tech to Mississippi. So a simple program that they can easily compute or they can use some of the old, old tax credits, and that's what the MFLEX program will have. The other thing that it has, I think, is also critical to you and to me, 
is the fact that it has re annual reporting of what those dollars were spent on. And the dollars are given retroactive, so you apply at the end of the year for your credit. That's also critical so that we know we don't waste any money in Mississippi. It's hard enough now. We've had budget cuts. We've had to struggle with our budget here in the state. The pandemic has just been horrendous to us. And with all of that, we need to make sure everything is accountable. This program does that. Very pleased with the economic developers, very pleased with the programs that they have offered, pleased with what we have done to make it even better, I think, and aim it at small businesses and have the annual reporting requirements. On the education front, the future of Mississippi is in education. We will be pushing again for a teacher pay raise. In addition to that, over 17,000 hours came from these dual credit and dual enrollment processes. You see those proliferating around Mississippi where they're actually getting college credits either toward a technical job or and or a college degree. Only 25% of Mississippians actually get a college degree. Those other 75% need a technical skill that will give them the economic advantages that we want for every citizen in Mississippi. You will see us push that dual credit and dual enrollment. We have work to do to make sure that that's given in every school in Mississippi, and there are a number of them. You can go to Clinton or Gulfport. You can go to many, many of our, our places in Mississippi, Vicksburg, and others that have these kind of dual credit enrollments. Those need to proliferate, and we're going to encourage them to proliferate this year. We, are, we want to consolidate some of our government agencies and start the process of making sure that our, your, your agency stays in its own silo and does its own work to the, to the best of its own ability. For that, I'd like to see the tourism, for example, spun off from MDA and start as a separate agency, the head appointed by the governor. That's important. It's for the fourth largest income producer we got in Mississippi. And they're also getting allocations of funds to go ahead and brand Mississippi this next year while we have this opportunity, I want to brand, rebrand Mississippi as with this new business tax incentives, our new flag that you voted for this past year, our new uh, ideas in Mississippi on how to progress, and we want to be competitive in the business area. You'll see us start to brand Mississippi shortly with that, and I think a new tourism department will be very, uh, very efficient to that. On our corrections, you'll see a new correction bill, and you'll see us trying to go ahead and educate those prisoners so that when they come out, they don't come back. They come out with a skill. We've done that with driver's license to allow them to get to work, and you'll see other, uh, other opportunities. I'd ask you to take a look at giving someone a second chance if they come out with a technical skill that can be beneficial to you. Lastly, you'll see us expanding a further broadband. Both We expanded it last year, a total of $150 million of broadband. This year, you'll see us expanding it as well. Uh, the federal government is also giving us a program. Everyone needs to be connected for everyone to be successful. It's going to be a really good year in Mississippi. It's going to be a really good year in the legislature. And I'm so looking forward to working with MEC and all of our businesses to make sure that happens. Well, we've made it to the end of our Capitol Day. We appreciate you being with us. We appreciate you being a part of it. But it's really important to look back and think about some of the things we've heard today. Again, understanding the value of education and why it's so important for us to really focus on that because it has such a major part in workforce development. Secondly, making sure our transportation system is strong and vital to where we are moving our economy as a result of having that transportation system that is considered to be in good shape and really able to serve the needs of our businesses. And then finally, of course, we want to talk about economic development. As you heard mentioned today, there's a plan in place to really change the way economic development and incentives are, are done. And this is going to put Mississippi at the forefront of having a program that makes it simple and easy for businesses to choose which is best for them. As we go into this session, MEC is going to continue to focus on, on workforce development. It has been our priority for the past couple of years to continue funding work keys, ACD work keys, which is an assessment of a child's work readiness in high school. Our goal is to fund it so that every high school student across the state of Mississippi has the opportunity to take this assessment to see exactly where he is in his work readiness. We also are going to continue to work with our transportation chairs to find additional dollars to put into our road and bridge system to address the needs that we have. You all may recall that in 2015, MEC through Blueprint Mississippi worked very diligently in an effort to fund additional dollars for transportation. And what we did is we were able to get over $200 million annually 
through the special session that was held in 2018. So going forward, we understand we still need more. So we want to find a solution, a way to make that happen. And then finally, we want to make sure that as we look at our tax structure in this state, that we're doing it in a very holistic manner to allow us to understand what it means to make changes. And I think that's one of the things that really excites me is that we have the opportunity to begin to address our needs in this state by really being very diligent on the impacts of what we do. So again, our day today has been a lot of fun. I really hate that you weren't able to be with us here live at the Capitol like we normally are. It's our hope that we'll be able to get together in person very soon uh, at some event across the state or either uh, our, here in Jackson. But until then, we're going to continue to provide you, our members, information that's important about Mississippi's economy in making our state stronger. And it's your support that allows that to happen. So again, thank you for being a part of the day, and we look forward to seeing you very soon.